In this video, we're gonna build out the back end of our dynamic table that handles the edit and update methods right within the table. So last video, we did everything in JavaScript, and this part, we're just gonna show you how that data can actually be sent to a back end and saved and updated in a database. So before we get started, make sure you're subscribed to my channel so you're not missing out on content like this in the future. And I'll just go ahead and review the code at this point. So we have uh, in Django here, we just have this object that we created that represents a database item that is actually gonna be saved. So that object just has a name and a result. Then we have our URL patterns where uh, the first path, so the original page, when we visit the page, it takes us to this template here. And this is just a copy and paste of what we built out earlier. So I just grabbed the original file. So we're building off of that project and we're rendering that at this point. Then we have this test API, which just returns, uh, it returns some data for us. So if I, if I call our root URL forward slash test API, we're gonna get back this data. So it's actual data that's in the database. And that gets rendered from this function here. So we have this test API data function that gets called and we just simply loop through the data and return back this dictionary that turns it into a JSON, uh, JSON array and sends it back. And then we just simply have our create, update and delete URLs. So for every single action that we're gonna make, we're gonna have a custom URL that calls a function for it. So our create function will simply take in the name of the test and the result we're gonna have. And it's just gonna query the database and create an object like this. And that's all it does to handle it. Update is similar to create, except for we just need not the name, but the ID of the object that we're updating. We're gonna grab the result and then query that test, give it a new result name and save it and delete, the only thing it needs is just an ID. So we pass it the ID, we find the test by its ID, and delete it from the database. So now we'll just go into the front end portion of things and I'll uh, start building out the things that we need here. So the first thing we wanna do in the template is remove the old data that we had. So this, uh, this original array of objects. We just want to make that an empty array at this point and we'll actually pass in the real data. So we also want to update this new ID value. We're going to set this to one and the value now is instead of just uh, incrementing each time, it's actually going to be a, uh, it's actually going to, the ID is going to be test dash and then whatever that incremented item is. And the reason we're doing this is because as we add items, we're actually gonna be pulling in real data from the database, which means that our IDs might conflict. So at this point, we're not using UIDs or anything like that. They're just incrementing in our database. So that means that if we just have a simple name of one, two, three, four, or a simple ID like that, um, we might run into this issue. So we just wanna make sure that we give it a custom ID, even though this is not the ID that's gonna save, the database will create its own. So now that we have that set up, we need to go ahead and make our uh, API request or API call. So first let's set the URL and we're gonna be getting this URL here. So I'll close this out, open up our URLs file. We're gonna call this. So our, uh, our data URL, so we'll just call the variable that is simply gonna be this forward slash and we're grabbing that. And this is gonna be an Ajax call and the method we're gonna use is gonna be get. And the URL is gonna be this URL that we just made. So our data URL, and now we can just return a success call and see what we have here. So throw in the response there. And I'll just console this out at this point. And actually, before we before we do that, let's go ahead and uh, throw in the data that we get called back into this response. So whatever we get back, the, uh, this array right here will be the new array that we get returned. So uh, we'll throw that in and test this out. Okay, so our table has no more data, so we haven't built that out yet, but we do get back this array from the database here. So 
all we have to do at this point is change up when this gets called here. So we want to call that loop only after the test array gets updated. So we won't make that call until the response is successful. So we make the call to that URL, we get back the data, we set it to test, and then we call the loop. So now when we open up the page, we should get our response and our data. So this is now real data. Next, I wanna build out three functions here that are gonna handle the calls to these URLs. So we're gonna create a function to create, update, and delete. So to make sure there's no conflicting names, I'll just build them out right here. And they're all gonna do pretty similar things. So I'll create them at, one, uh, at the same time and uh, we'll just have their customizations here. So we'll call this function create test. And just to make sure we don't conflict with anything, we'll call it create test post. And I'll go ahead and do that for the delete and the update. So update and delete. Okay, so each function is gonna have a URL that we need to send it to. So I'm just gonna create a the URL. I'm just gonna call it URL. It's a, because it's inside the function, it's not gonna conflict with anything else. And this URL is gonna be create test. And I can do the same for all these guys. And I'll just need to change up the final URL. Okay, and now for the Ajax call. So the method we're gonna use for these is gonna be post now instead of get. So we're sending data. Uh, the URL is just gonna be the URL we created. And let's give it the success response. And we'll just build this into the rest of these guys. So now that the URL is dynamic, according to each function, we don't need to change anything up there. Okay, so let's start with the create function now. Um, the create function, all it needs is the, we need to pass in some data here. So data is gonna be the object that we're creating in our local state here. So even though it's created locally, when we send it back to the database, we need to access it. So uh, the data we're gonna pass in is new test. And we wanna call this function right after we add the row here. So once the row is created, we'll see it build out in the front end and then we're gonna make that call to the back end. And I'll open up the, the view here. So the functions that actually process this so you can see what's going on. And we're gonna be focused on this view. So let's test this out and see if everything's working. Let's add in Flashpoint. Give it the result of 21, add. And now when we refresh it, you're gonna see ooh, something didn't work. So let me confirm what's going on here. Okay, I think I found our issue and this needs to be method. That's definitely gonna give us an error. And I'll fix this for the rest of these. Okay, so now when we create it, that should add it. So we'll throw in Flashpoint 21. And we refresh. There we go. So the item is now in there. Let's test it one more time. We'll do distillation 53. And as we refresh, the item actually gets saved to the database. So what's happening here is we call this create URL, which activates this function right here. And that's this view which sends it to the back end and we pass in because new test, because we're passing a new test as an object, uh, it has a name and a result. So as we type, those items get updated. We send it to the back end. We grab the name by doing request.post.get name and the result and the object gets created here. So now we need to do something similar for update. Update is gonna be a tad different from create, and we're actually gonna pass in a parameter. So data is just gonna be that data parameter, and we'll call that in the function that actually triggers it. And we'll do the same, because we're gonna do the same for delete. I'll just throw that in right now. 
and the parameter is going to be data again. And let's go to update. So update will call in the save update function right here. So the first thing we need to do is uh, we need to grab the value of the inputs we're actually making into these fields. And at this point, I don't really have a method of grabbing that. So what we're going to do is add an ID to that new input field and we'll just call it test and we'll throw in the test ID. So now before we grab the result, we can say uh, result, we can set the variable and we'll just query it by the test ID. And let's make those template literals again. And we'll throw in the test ID. So now we can actually call the update post function. So update post. Oh, okay, sorry, I actually missed one piece here. So let's make our actual data. So data is gonna be this object. So just as we sent in that test ID or that new test, um, at this point, we need to pass in the ID of the object we wanna update. And we can just do test ID and the result. And we need to make sure we're grabbing the value of this. So now we can say result, throw that in there and data or update test post just takes in this object. So when we send it to the back end, we're now gonna grab the object ID by this ID attribute right here. And the result, by grabbing that new result, we're gonna query that item from the database, set the new value and save it. So let's go ahead and test that. Looks like we have a little error. Let's see what's going on. And I think what happened is we're missing a comma here. So we'll probably do the same for delete. No, we actually handled delete properly. And let's test it now. So let's change that to 68. And for some reason our save method is not working. So let me figure out what's going on here. So I think the key up event wasn't working because I forgot or I accidentally, rem accidentally removed the custom attribute of data test ID or of test ID right here. So um, it couldn't find which button we're working on. So I think that should resolve that issue. So let's try that one more time. There we go. So our save method is activated. And when we refresh, that should still be 61. Okay, perfect. So. That handles update. All we need to do is delete an item now. So delete test should actually be the easiest one here. Um, all we need to do is figure out which item we're deleting. So let's go ahead and in our confirm deletion function, let's build out this data item or object and throw in the test ID. And when we call the function delete test post, we just pass it in this one attribute and it's going to send it to the back end just to reiterate this right here. It's going to send it to the back end, grab the ID, query the object and delete it. So now when we hit delete, confirm, delete, confirm, um, when we refresh now, as we delete again, the items are now removed. And when we add items into the database, they save. So that takes care of it for the back end portion. So we now have uh, uh, both ends of things. We're able to add it in from the, the front end in JavaScript and actually handle it with the database. So if you found this video helpful, please make sure to subscribe, like, and leave me comments in the uh, comment section. I'd love to get that kind of feedback. And thank you for watching.